taken by this feeling baby we're invincible Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Knotts County. As always, if you're enjoying the save, drop a like on the video, that'd be tremendous. I thought today we'd start on Regan Booty, and for one very clear reason, I thought we might manage to make this happen. I didn't know if it was going to quite be, I figured he'd come back to, I don't know, sort of here. But oh no, he has gone stratospheric uh, over the course of this season. Now that he's finally started to find his feet again, and he is really rocking it, and I am so goddamn happy for the guy. I always felt that he had that quality to do so, and I think he's really showing that in the championship as well. Uh, in spite of all the and perhaps drawbacks of the guy, he's still, you know, five million pound value. He's got three years on his contract still. There's a long way to go with this guy, and I think that that's beautiful, and I think he'll be here for a long time. 146 appearances uh, for Notts County now since the start of this save, and I'm a huge fan of that. I think he's been absolutely fantastic, and Captain, Captain Marvelous will continue to to bang in booties uh, for oh that sounds bad for a little while now hopefully I just wanted to I just wanted to show you that he's actually progressed back to that point now and we just need to nurse him through the rest of the season that's the plan amaze one on ones haven't been patched by now um yeah ah there's not really much more we can say about that I think that's just one of those things I know people will argue that oh it's because of the and no, I'm sorry there should be more of them being scored than there are it is as simple as that and I will not hear anything other than that because you just do not score enough of them. There is nowhere near as many as are scored in real life. It's as simple as that. Um, so, yeah, fix it, basically. That's, that's the one thing, honestly, that's the one thing that would make this game pretty much beautiful, frankly. Uh, I don't think long shots are going in too often. I think it just appears that way because they're not scoring the one-on-ones. Your goal against Brentford came from the ball being squared rather than a usual shot of goal. Did you build a new computer again to make this happen? No, but... Thoughts for everyone there. Perhaps try that one out. It's an expensive strategy, but we might pay off. What leagues do you have loaded? I have England loaded. Uh, down to, I believe, the National League. It might not even be the National League. Uh, yeah, it has to be, because that's the one we started in. That's it. I only have England turned on. The reason we're getting all those regens is because I've gone through and manually turned on all the uh, players from the other countries, but not the leagues. It speeds up the processing like crazy. Even on a poor computer like my old one, it was still so much faster. I've got like 400,000 players nearly turned on, and yet this still runs like I'm... I mean, it does now, because this has an insane processor. But even before it was still working great so that's the idea just if you want to get loads of regions like i've been doing or hopefully will do just turn the players on don't turn the leagues on unless you're planning on moving clubs in which case you kind of have no choice have you ever had someone recognize you in the street from this um not really i think someone did recognize me uh, me and em went to um this gig at uh alexandra palace right at the start of last year um to see architects while she sleeps in that and someone did say they recognized me there but they didn't actually come up to me or anything like that so that that's i think that's the only time let's face it i don't have a, a particularly large audience in the grand scheme of things so i think i might have fixed us and that's terrifying for everybody else because we're coming for you now, boys. Uh, you might know it's down here that Regan Booty's got some quite interesting uh, goals and assists and whatnot now. Uh, well, we'll talk about what's happened off camera because, my goodness, we have suddenly found some goals. Believe me. I wasn't joking. We went and won 7-2 against Mill. Seven! We scored seven goals. We've not scored more than two goals in a game this season. And we rarely score more than one. And we go and score seven against Millwall, who were above us in the league and we were away from home. Booty again was phenomenal. Um, I mean, what can we even say about this? Two goals for Ron Coates. Two goals for Tunji Akinola. Both of which were identical. Ball whipped in by Regan Booty from a corner. The keeper just missed it, hence the 4.6. And Akinola was able to grab a pair. Two for Tyrese Campbell. And even one for Kieran Dewsbury Hall MP. Lovely one. It just took it inside and thundered one at the near post. We did concede a pair of goals, both one-on-ones, I think. The second one certainly was. And we scored a couple randomly in this game. They just seemed to work all of a sudden. And yeah, a 7-2 victory. So what I've changed is I'll show you properly in the tactics mainly, but we've gotten both of our fullbacks are now on support, even though Duhaney has been a little bit kneecapped by this. And both of our wingers are now on attack and have got um, some slight changes to their individual instructions. I've also made it so that our box-to-box -box midfielder no longer dribbles more and will now have a few more shots on him, just to occasionally pick out a long boy. That's all I've really changed. And we're now on low crosses. And I think that's been the real difference for us. We've suddenly started scoring more and conceding more, but it's just more entertaining in the grand scheme of things. So I was pleased with that. And also super pleased for Ron Coach to grab himself a brace. So, so importantly needed. And this sort of continued into the next game. A three-all draw away at QPR. We were 2-0 down in this one. Um, it better ease. And then Bright also Samuel put them 2-0 up inside 31 minutes. And I thought, oh, okay. Maybe this was just because of the Millwall game. But then Ryan Manning was sent off. And all of a sudden, we came back into it. Akinola scored. Then Booty scored as well. Um, and then, unfortunately, uh, they went back in front again through ease with a long-range screamer. Frustrating one. But luckily, a day... Uh, um, Oshilayaja's own goal uh, was enough to give us an equaliser late on to get us a 3 all draw at QPR. So lots of goals being scored all of a sudden, 10 in two games, but also conceded five in that period. So the defensive side of things isn't quite as uh, solid anymore, but my God, have we got goals going forward. 
But then we sort of found a balance in the next game at home against David Moises Preston. It's nice to see him return there. Tyrese Campbell and then Ron Coates again, who was absolutely phenomenal in this match. As you can see, three chances created, four key passes, an assist and a goal from Ron Coates. All of a sudden, he has finally found his feet again. And it seems like he's about to have a fantastic season. Uh, Dropkick McPhee, he's contributing a little assist here and there. He's just starting to creep into it a bit more now. So I'm liking his output too. And Duhaney, once again, was able to have a good game, even playing slightly deeper. I think we've really found something now. And then another home game, a 2-0 victory this time against Sheffield Wednesday. They only had one shot on target in the entire game. Egil Hermanson scored a goal from a free kick of all places. Booty whipped the ball across and there was Hermanson. Uh, later in the game, of course, Tunji Akinola scored another one. But this time it was a slightly different one in the sense that Booty whipped a corner in. The ball was cleared. Robbie Burton headed it back across and there was Akinola again. I think he's got six goals this year, Akinola. What an absolute legend he is. Um, really, really top player. Booty was phenomenal again. Burton was solid in the midfield. Just a really solid performance again. You can see we're getting goals. We're looking more like it now. We're still looking pretty solid at the back because they did nothing. And then we made it three wins out of three in a row uh, with a 4-2 victory at home against, all right, fair enough, bottom of the league Sunderland. Didn't stop them from being in front against us twice. They actually scored two goals from one shot on target, to give you an idea. Ezra Hugenboom's goal, it deflected in, basically. I don't know how that didn't count as an own goal, though, so I don't really know how that happened. But essentially, we came from behind. Campbell scored. Niall McPhee scored, which was really, really nice. I think he also got an assist, or did he? No, that was someone else. Um, Justin Backer's goal. Ricky Griffiths also added a late one for us, uh, as KDH whipped one across the box, and there was Griffiths at the back post just to head it home for 4-2. Once again, though, I rested Booty, and I rested... Who did I rest as well? Uh, Hermanson for this game, and it... Yeah. The team just stuck straight in there. Two assists for Robbie Burton, one for Dewsbury Hall. Lovely partnerships in the midfield. And suddenly we've got goals for days. And it is gorgeous. And with all that, we are now fifth in the championship. Comfortably sitting in the playoffs. And I happen to say now, we are comfortably going to be a playoff team this year, I think. And actually, amazingly, we now have the best goal difference in the league. Just out of nowhere, really. Booty is the second highest rating player in the division. And we are now really coming for teams. And it's beautiful. Scoring a few more goals. Getting way more wins, which is the key thing. We're just winning more games that would have been draws before. And just the tiniest little tweaks can make this. And this is why I constantly harp on the fact that never be satisfied. I could have, we could have easily sat there and gone, yeah, but we're, we're mid-table in the championship. What do you expect? We're newly promoted side. Players are probably undervalued and overperforming in a way anyway. We can't expect more. The point is you can always get more out of players. And I feel like we've kind of done that now. And I'll talk to you a bit just now, actually, let's go and show you how. Because today we're away at Birmingham City, final game before the winter break. Weird saying that about the English leagues, even though we return on New Year's Eve because reasons. <laughs> so, a few players out for them, but that's fine. Let's uh, take a little look. So, the changes I made. We've oh, that's the other change I made. I turned off the overlaps. This is the key thing for me. I think this is what's made the biggest difference. Firstly, we're on low crosses. You knew that anyway. Um... I've made it so that these guys are both on support. These guys are both on attack. That hasn't really required a great deal of changes, mostly just this side. But now they're all in their key roles, which I think is helpful as well. I don't know if I've added any more uh, individual instructions to these players specifically. No, but I have changed this one. So turning off the dribbling more and turning shoot more often on. But the main change is we turned off the overlaps because... If we're going to be playing it so that we've got attacking wingers and supporting fullbacks, we don't want the wingers waiting for the overlaps. We want them creating it. And it's making a brilliant effort where a player will get the ball in the midfield or on this right-hand side, and Ron Coates is making runs in behind, as is Niall McPhee. And that's suddenly getting them into the game way, way more and making a massive difference. And I think that's really perked up both of their form, to be honest. And we might actually start to see a lot more out of them in the second half of the year. And I think that we can get in the playoffs this year. And if we carry on playing like this, who knows where we can go. But I'm really, really stoked with the way things are going. So, a few changes definitely needed for today's game, though. Uh, firstly, Regan Booty can come back in again. Although I've been very, very impressed with... I mean, who do we even bring in? Robbie Burton has performed slightly better overall, but Jewsbury Hall... I'm going to bring Booty in for Jewsbury, uh, for Burton this time, and we're going to put Husey back where he is, because I still like him in that role. And Hermanson, I, I'm a huge fan of Hermanson, so I want to continue with what's working, really. As for the bench, Keeble, Lervik, Burton, Chewich, O'Shea, Walker, and Baldwin. Same kind of normal approach. I have found a couple of regens that I'm looking at. There's one guy who I've got on trial from a Swiss club who looks like he might actually have some potential and he could be available quite cheap. So we're just I've just started scouting a few little um, smaller nations, uh, smaller clubs in smaller nations to see if we can pick anyone up. At the moment, my scouts have currently got to Turkey. So we might be able to find a few interesting signings in there on the cheap that we can maybe bring in too. But for the moment, I'm happy with the fact that we've got... Like, our starting lineup has got four, no, three regens in it already and hopefully we can start moving that over very, very soon. There's a lot more waiting in the wings, particularly when Mamacon Oz joins us. But it's also just been nice to see Tyrese Campbell scoring a few more. He's up to eight for the season now. I think he's doubled his tally over the, the break between episodes. So more from him is very, very nice indeed. 
Sean Dyche has been at virtually every game we've played watching Ron Coates, and it does concern me that we might have a battle to keep him in January now that he's finally back in form. But shit happens, you know? And I'm more than happy to keep on going. I think we're unbeaten in quite a while now. And I see no reason why we can't add to that today, but you never know. Because a lot of the changes I've made haven't really been any different to the stuff we did earlier in the season. Because it's just switching around roles. The low crosses might have an effect because, I mean, I don't know. That might not be that important. We might be able to get more out of it without it. I think the main difference has been the turning off of the overlaps because these are supporting wingbacks. We don't want them really overlapping. And I genuinely believe that it's the supporting wingback situation for us that's causing us... We'll see how it goes today against Birmingham. But you should be able to see very, very quickly from some of the opening highlights of this match what kind of changes. It's definitely made us worse at the back, which is fine because we're scoring more goals going forward and getting the best out of Ron Coates. Because you can see right here, They'd be sitting much, much deeper if they were on support. And we'd have this kind of weird lopsided shape. But what often will happen now from these situations is McGee will drop it out to one of the fullbacks and they will just go straight to the wingers. We'll see if that happens today. Hughesy, yeah, there you go. Straight to Ron Coates. And all of a sudden, we've got space and we're running at them. We've got three players already forward. Coates, oh, can't do it that time. But there's instant danger and we're getting the ball forward a little bit faster. And it just makes us so much more dangerous going forward and allows Ron Coates to actually show off a bit of his quality. Jukovic! And, well, Lucas Jukovic has put Birmingham in front. That is some dreadful defending from us. And we're going to have to come from behind, which we've done before. We came from behind against QPR to get a draw. We came from behind against Sunderland to win the match. Who was this? Was this Fleming? I mean, this... Oh, to be fair, he's just dawdled on the ball. It's a thunderous effort from Jukovic, though. I mean, he's wasted no time with that. Okay, come from behind, I guess. But we've still got what it takes, I think, to turn this one around. We need a big performance from the likes of Booty and Coatsy, etc. And it's Duhaney now. Might get to the ball and goes back for Coates. Who drops it across for Campbell. Lovely work from Ron Coates there. Jukovic. One by Fleming. Space for Regan Booty. Now he's got more options into the channel. One of them is Campbell. He's gone too wide, surely. Can he pull it back across for somebody? He doesn't. Booty's in! Oh, lovely work. It's the world's longest one-two there. Lozano, don't let him get the... Oh, he's got, got round a man. Hermanson does superbly well, but he's got to try and get to the second ball here. And now with the space. Illich. And Holland off the crossbar. But you can see we just look that little bit more dangerous. And Booty now thunders one at goal. We're getting more shots, more shots on target, more chances. It's all just looking that little bit better for us now. Well... It's an annoying one when they've, they've scored from their only shot on target. Booty's doing a great job in the midfield again. we definitely got to be better in the second half. But again, we're looking solid still. Oh my god, so much space for Holland. And it's in off the... Wow, off the inside of the post there. This is a dangerous situation for them though. We've got a lot of players pushed forward. Like this, Dehaney. Coates has got to make that run in behind. There it is. Coates is in. Can he square it for someone? Does McPhee! Oh, lovely stuff. That is what I'm on about. Coates is now getting into much better positions. Because they're both on attacking, they're making those runs in behind. And McPhee's now making those runs to the far post. Third goal of the season for Hib. Just needs that little bit of space in the wide areas for Dehaney. Just rolls it in for Coates. He gets to the byline this time and actually puts in a wonderful ball. Keeper can't do anything about it. There's Niall McPhee. Re oh, lovely little header from him. Se the third goal of the season from him now. Lovely. It's nice to see Niall McPhee score another goal as well. Oh, run the side for Jukovic! And immediately, Birmingham City are back in front again. <laughs> Good lord. Lukas Jukovic has been excellent today. Um, frustrating, to be honest. I think we've been pretty solid on the night, but we've just completely t switched off the moment we can see, uh, scored our equaliser. Holland just rolls it around the side. Sam Hughes does not track the runner properly, and it's a simple little finish at the near post from Jukovic. That's poor. This would be a frustrating game to lose, just given the fact that we've actually played really well. Um, but, hey, you're going to lose them eventually like that, I suppose. It's just an annoying one. Because we're supposed to be demonstrating how much better we've got. And to be fair, I think it does do that in some ways. It's just an annoying one. Walker. Oh, here's Niall McPhee. Can he find a cross, though? No, but he's won us a corner. Maybe there's one last sting in the tail for an equaliser or something. Make it another live common draw, why don't we? Booty delivers. And it's cleared. McPhee. Burton loves a long shot, but not quite enough space for it. McPhee might, though. And now he's hurt himself. That is a concern. Well, it looks like we're going to go down 2-1 here. Booty's ball. And it's cleared through with Campbell. Back for Booty. Ball in. No. And, oh, yes. Tyrese Campbell in the 97th minute bails us out at St. Andrews. I think we can't We can't act like we didn't deserve that goal. We've been really decent on the night there. Absolute scenes at St. Andrews in the 97th minute. Now, of course, I can appreciate that there was less stoppage time than that, but there was that injury to McPhee. It's come at him a few times. The keeper nearly gets to it, and Tyrese Campbell has bailed us out of the death. Two all at St. Andrews. Come on. That's a superb result. Well, I mean, it's not, but... Again, the chance creation is solid, and it's another game unbeaten, which is the main thing. And we still look really, really good. And another, it's nice to see two goals being scored for once. Booty. Oh, surely not. Oh, definitely not. Booty flying back and making the tackle. And it's a two-all draw in the end. <laughs> oh, my God. McPhee and Campbell with the goals. Booty wins man of the match again. What a surprise. <laughs> like, he's just so good. An annoying result 
to be sure. But nevertheless, um, I still think we played really, really well on the night. And if we keep doing that, I see no reason why we won't get in the playoffs. We just look really solid. But now Booty goes back to being the best average rating player in the entire division. He just seems to keep on doing it. Chances created, it's a similar story, but it's really all Regan Booty now. He's got seven more than Matty Cash. So obviously we've got a Forest offered us another friendly. Um, oh, well, we, we know what we're going to come back for in the next episode. It is undeniably going to have to be Nottingham Forest. Um, the home game against them at Meadow Lane. Can we find... I feel like we've got a really good shot now of beating them in that game and getting our revenge. Um, that's on the 2nd of January. So, yeah, there's a few games to come still. But we've got the old uh, the World Cup to get out of the way. And then we'll be back with Huddersfield and Watford games off camera before we come back for... Well, we'll do Forest and Swansea, I suppose, since it's... Uh, I that was the, yeah, that's the exact same live comments last time. But there you go. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, drop a like on the video. That would be tremendous. Um... If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be gorgeous as well. And as always, hold your gun, Capybara. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.